What's up, guys? You ever see that YouTube channel, The House of Kush? I feel like the vibes I'm getting from this uh, EKX is just smooth like that channel, and um, I wish I had that guy's d demeanor and pace to, to teach like that. He d he's a post-audio engineer that just has really great vibes encouragement. Check him out. Anyway, today we're checking out Tune Tracks Melodic Percussion Metal. There's also a Tune Track Modern Percussion Wood that's in a different video. The link is in the description. This is the metal one. And the reason why we're hearing two products at the same time, this is actually the same product, two libraries at the same time, is because when you buy the Melodic Percussion Metal, it actually comes with three libraries. It comes with Vibraphone Hall, which is recorded in a large space, Vibraphone Studio, which is recorded in a smaller space, and it comes with the Glockenspiel as well. And what's cool about the MIDI, which is unique, is if we go to the products MIDI folder right here, a lot of percussion metal, most of these songs have two separate folders, one for vibraphone, which we're on, and one for glockenspiel, which is over here, and they're both playing together. These dual folders are the same songs. They have the same folder structure. And when you look inside them, I'll look inside this intro folder, there's only four files here. If we go in the glockenspiel intro, there's only four files there. All those files match up identically and complement each other. It's not the same MIDI, it's complementing MIDI. So I thought it'd be cool to present them together as they complement each other, which we're hearing not right now. When I unsolo the vibrato, we'll hear it. Here we go. Now we're hearing both of them together. It's pretty darn cool. And I have a hardware controller in front of me. If you watch these solo buttons, I might solo up one to talk about it. There's the vibraphone. I might solo up the other one. Here's the glockenspiel. So overall, a uh, good experience with this prod product. I'm not an expert in melodic percussion, but I know enough about it. And I, you know, checked it out a little bit before recording this video. Uh, overall positive experience. If you're not into this stuff, but you're into tune tracks, so you're checking out this product, you're kind of ignorant to these types of instruments, I'll cover them real quick. The vi vibraphone, it's metal blocks that produce a certain pitch, and underneath them there's a cylinder. On different vibraphones, it might not always be cylinders, it might be triangle and a square. Cylinders are supposedly the best, but there's a cylinder that amplifies the note that the metal block hits. On top of that, there's a motor, kind of similar to the Leslie speaker on the Hammond B3. There's a motor which turns these fins, kind of like a fan, but they're fins. Doesn't look exactly like a fan. And these fans are under each and every single one of these metal pieces, and they create this tremolo effect. So that's why this tremolo effect is here. So let's just cover the tremolo effect real quick while we're talking about it. You can turn off the motor. It sounds much more straightforward. You can turn it on all the time with the vibraphone. You can't adjust the tremolo volume though. It's a very realistic way this thing works. You can't turn up the effect or down, but you can adjust its rate to very fast. I'll solo up the uh, vibraphone to really slow. And you would adjust this rate for many reasons, whether it's the tempo of your music or just a creative vibe you're going for. So when we actually, here's the effects panel, which I have expanded on these products. So we'll always see a tremolo on the vibraphone, not with the glockenspiel. The glockenspiel is a very simple instrument. It's just metal keys that produce a pitch. Unless you get like a custom one that's much bigger, does it come with a sustain pedal or not? On the vibraphone, it does have a sustain pedal. It's down here. It's out of view no matter how big this is. And you'll notice these, all these keys lifting up and coming down. Those are lifting off of a felt pad, so they sustain more, and then coming down onto a felt pad, so they sustain less. So we got to kind of keep an open mind as to what preset we're hearing and what song we're hearing. There might be a lot of sustain pedal movement. It might make that preset sound more muffled or sustaining. That's just the nature of the beast. And if you go over to the grid editor and you go down to this sustain lane, you can see all these rectangles. That's all the sustain pedal movements. It's 
it's a lot. Some songs have very little, some songs have a lot like this one. So that affects the tone of the preset, so you just have to keep that in mind. Other than that, the reverb seems consistent. It seems like the same reverb throughout this whole library. Let me turn off tremolo, let's hear it real quick. Let me just crank it, let me max it out so we can hear what it does. Listen. Super clean and awesome. I'll reset these knobs by double clicking on them. And here's just the recommended reverb for this preset. And here's the instrument dry. So now we're just hearing the ambience of the room it was recorded in, not the reverb that was applied after the fact. And then we have a microphone module, and this will change depending on what preset you go to. Right now we only see two options, sometimes you'll see three. And we won't see the same options every time. Ambient near microphones are just probably a pair of microphones that are close to the instrument. And what's, what's cool about this is not that Easy Keys 2 doesn't have a mixer tab, but at least when you turn down these mics, it completely kills the sound. I'm tapping these keys now, which means you can isolate either mic. Let's just hear the ambient near mic. Let's hear the Deca Tree mic. And then, of course, you can mix them together. And I've only heard of a Deca Tree microphone it's a configuration deck tree microphone configuration a few times in my life not very experienced but it's like a t-bar with multiple microphones on it usually more than two so it's a way to maybe pick up stereo and mono at the same time you'd have to research it on your own but that's why that word exists we've not just seen ambient near and ambient far we see deca now that's what that is it's a certain microphone configuration so that kind of covers what the effects does throughout this vibraphone hall library preset. Lastly, let me solo up uh, vibraphone. The pan knob, this isn't really a creative thing to click on. This is more of a utility because it's a complete pan reverse. So left goes all the way to right and right goes all the way to left. That's all it does. It's kind of like an easy drummer three, the drummer's perspective. All this button is saying is, hey, when you hear this instrument, are you standing behind the instrument and performing on it? Or are you in the audience facing the person who's performing? And all it does, and when you make that decision, you click this button. So right now, the low notes are panned left for me because I'm supposedly behind this instrument playing it. Or if I select the pan reverse, that means I'm now in the audience looking at this instrument from the opposite side. So now the low notes in the right ear. So it's not really a, in my opinion, a creative decision to click this. It's more of a utility. So I think that about does it describing how this instrument works, how the general effects work. The glockenspiel, it's very similar, except it has no sustain and it has no muting. And, uh, the great toys uh, about the glockenspiel, you know, if a producer or a a band member ever says, hey, I want the sound of bells. Sometimes when people say they want the sound of bells, they're actually referring to a glockenspiel. So you could pull this up and be like, you mean this? Does this work? So sometimes it's referred to as bells. So we're listening to the first song, which is called Singer Songwriter. We're hearing the two versions of MIDI from both instruments made to work together. And I think it's safe to move on. Let's check out the next preset on the vibraphone, which is Big Hall. You can see we have an extra mic channel and this is the ambient far. Let me turn off tremolo. I still have the vibraphone soloed up right now. Let me turn down the ambient near Deca tree. Let's hear these three mics real quick. Turn down the verb real quick. Here's near. Definitely more broader tone on the near. And the Deca tree, I like it the most, at least on this preset. It, it's not an air frequency, there's something smooth about it. Maybe it's dipping the mid somewhere or something. And here's the intended preset right here. Now I have the glockenspiel in. 
Oh, and I meant to start Glockenspiel on its basic default preset. Let's hear it. Let's hear if it's the similar reverb real quick that the um, vibraphone has. Crank it up. Let's hear it. You know, I hear something more in the attack of this reverb compared to this, but it's probably just the tone of the instrument having a harsher transient or a more piercing attack might be triggering the reverb. So, because the tail of the reverb sounds similar to this. Cool. And real quick, uh, here's a near mic, dry. Here's the Deca. And here's what that default preset should sound like. Fun. Here's both together. Yeah. Let's check out the close preset. We're on the vibraphone. Now we have stereo mono mics. So it's even more of a mystery of what's going on there. I'll solo up the vibraphone. Here's mono. We turn off tremolo. I like tremolo, but I like to turn it off when I'm trying to listen through it and see what the tones and the mic sound like. So here's Mike's mono. It's definitely mono, a good way to get some focus. Here's stereo. If you look up the product pages for either of these EKXs, there are a ton of mics in play. Who knows how many mics are in this stereo, how many mics are in this mono, or how many mics are in the Deca or the Ambient, but you can kind of get a quick idea by checking out the product page and just going across. Wow, there's a plethora of mics here. So. Let's check out Gentle on vibraphone. Uh, gentle makes sense. The attack is way less harsh. Solo it up. Now we have stereo, mono, plus, and ambient near. So we got up to three knobs or mic channels to work with, but who knows how many mics are going through each channel, but grateful for the options, right? Let's check out Big Hall on the Glockenspiel. Now we have more mics on the Glock. They call the Glockenspiel Glock for short, so uh, yeah, people do that. Pretty cool. Let's check out a different song. Not every song has MIDI from both of these that coordinate together, but you know, four or five of them do. So uh, let me change the tempo to 193. This is a Latin. So these, uh, the genre selection for melodic production is quite eclectic to my experience in life. I've, you know, it's pretty cool to hear this stuff. So let's check it out. Oh yeah, it's pretty cool. It's fun just to be able to drag this MIDI down to the song track in the playing field on both of these instruments and hit play, get the right tempo up and go. Definitely sounds like something, sounds like something pro too. It's pretty cool. Let's switch over to tight hall. Solo up vibraphone. Yet a new configuration of mics. There's something I can't officially decide yet, but and I believe in real life with a vibraphone, if you turn the fan motor on and off, those fans are spinning and they'll stop at a certain position, which will affect your tone because those fans are in a sense blocking these cylinders. So if you turn that motor on and off, those fans will stop at a certain position and will affect your tone. Similar to the, uh, the Leslie speaker on the B3 organ from the um, Session Organ EKX uh, review. I'll leave the link below, fantastic EKX. 
You know, if you stop that speaker from rotating at a certain point, it will stop and the speaker will be facing a different direction every time. So it'll alter your tone every time. I thought I heard that on this with those fan fins stopping in a certain place, but I don't know. I can't tell if I was tripping out or not. So when you hit on and off with the tremolo, just listen to the tone. It might be kind of changing every other time. I feel like I heard it once, but now that I'm listening for it, I can't hear it. So maybe that's happening. But in reality, when you're with a, a vibraphone, that actually does happen. So it's a fun little fact if you were unaware. I'm gonna switch over to basic mallets. One note is this is, here's mallet mode. So what is standard mode? I do not know. Maybe they're playing with just regular beaters or some other, you know, tool that strikes this instrument. So I don't actually know what standard mode is. Maybe it's just beaters. But now we have mallets, which I assume would have a slightly softer transient or attack. It's pretty cool. Let's bring the uh, glockenspiel in. Let's check out close on the glockenspiel. I've got the glock soloed up. The glock. It's a great toys, man. It's really fun. We've got a blues song, but both of them both the Glock and the vibraphone don't have a blues song. So let me just mute the Glock and Spiel. I changed the tempo accordingly and let's go down to big hall mallets on the blues song. Here we go. Next song is Pop, which is at 79 tempo. And both of them have it. Let me unmute these and let's keep moving down big close mallets and let's move to short and sweet. Both of those are sound like metaphors that are similar. So maybe they'll work together. Here we go. It's fun stuff. Very cool. Gentle mallets. I'm going to switch over the vibraphone. Let me solo it up first. Close mallets. Over to gentle. Yeah. The attack is way gentler. Uh, sound feels accurate. Let's get over to the glockenspiel. Gonna go from short and sweet to tight and hall. Glockenspiel's upping its channel count on mics. Cool. And what do I have next? Let's go tight hall mallets. I've got a vibraphone solid up. Let's go with up the middle on Glockenspiel. Let me solo it up. Definitely some saturation up in the high end kicked in on that. And um, as you can see, we only have one mic channel, close mono. Then we get into the more the creative stuff. So let me, there's something about this. Let me pause. So what's next is an effects category on both of these. And On The Rocks actually has its own song. And Bode actually has its own song. So let's just do Bode on the vibraphone. I'm going to solo it up. Move over to Bode. That's at 60 BPMs. Let's hear Bode. And I had my ignorance. I never even knew people used a bow on 
on a vibraphone or any of these types of, you know, bar, pitch, percussion, melodic percussion instruments. So I'm, I'm going to look this up later and just see what it looks like. But the sustain is there, and you need to have sustain in your MIDI for this to really work, I believe. It's really cool. When I hear stuff like this, I'll, I realize, I start to realize the other uh, third-party instruments I use, maybe from native instruments or something, I realize where they get their sounds from. Maybe someone's bowing a piece of metal, you know, like this, you know? It's super cool. So this is the bowed song, which is only for the vibraphone, not for the glockenspiel. And the block glockenspiel has On the Rocks. I'm going to try not to forget that I'm skipping over these two. Let me switch over to On the Rocks. <clears throat> So that's bowed on vibraphone. Now here's on the rocks for glockenspiel. We have the sound and the song. Let's just hear what this sounds like. Glock only. Yeah, dynamics are su super low. That's why it's quiet. Pretty interesting. Let's hear these two so I don't accidentally skip them. This is Ghostenspiel. Yeah, there's definitely a reason for that name. That's scary and freaky and it's awesome. Modulation, let me turn this up. Get to really use your ears, not for the attack, but for the sustain to hear what's going on in there. Let me play a busier part. I can't even hear the attacks with the filter cut off up. Yeah, there's probably some verb, I assume, simulated ambience there. Just says pitch feedback. It's not hit me in the face and what that does. And you can hear the wavering of the modulation. It's very cool. That's, I like that. Let's try in space. A similar effect. Maybe a little less horror movie like. You ever hear a, so a sound and wish you could go back in time and use that sound on a project you already finished? Like like to score like a horror movie or something with stuff like this. Let's check out the modulation real quick. Ugh. Uh, uh, in a good way. It makes me feel not strong in my stomach due to the out of tuneness. It's creepy. That's awesome. All right, so there's the glockenspiel. And what do we have left over here? I have four different things under effects. So let's check out distant vibes. songs. I wonder if I should use Riffer for these. Uh, it's a different plugin. Uh, actually, no, I'll save Riffer for the other. We have one library we're missing we still have to cover, which is Vibrato Stu Vibraphone Studio, so we'll use Riffer for that. Let's use, let's use this little MIDI block right here, this groove, because it's bright. Let's check out the last two we got. Last three. This was Distant Vibes. Here's Rotations. I believe this is the first time we have an extra effect. Look, we have a rotary. 
and it's under mic, so I wonder if that's a speaker cabinet like the Leslie. I don't know where that comes from, but rotary is different than tremolo. Tremolo's not even activated. Let's hear if this is a rotary speed or volume. Oh, it says level right on it, so we at least we can control the volume of the rotary effect. Turn it off. Maxed out. Cool. Can't control the speed, but there's a, yet another effect you can run into. And let's check out Soft Crystals Ambience. Great sustain, like pad-like sustain, except there's these little... If you listen to the end of the tail of the note, this crystals thing is what it is, obviously. Yeah, that's fun. Modulation. This makes it wobble a little more. That's very cool. That's fun. Lastly, we have soft pad. Two new modules. We actually have a tone knob. Definitely working. And we have a chorus effect. All right, so that's that's the majority of the prod project. I think I got to set up another session because we have one more library to check out. Let me put it, pull up some MIDI we haven't heard yet, and maybe we'll use a program called Riffer. So be right back. All right, I have the Vibraphone Studio library loaded up. I'm going to try and push fast because this video is getting long. But what we've been hearing so far is the MIDI that's included with this EKX. But shortly after the EKX was released, there was a MIDI pack released just for the melodic mallets, metal, and wood. So it's a separate purchase, this product right here. And I'm only going to play three songs from it because I'm kind of in a hurry. But we have three, four, 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 swing, six, eight, and six, four. So there's a lot of it in there. And half of this product is meant for the marambo which is the wood ekx and the other one's meant for the vibraphone which is this metal ekx so i picked three songs out of here so this how it works and this is really huge i mean look at in this one marambo look there's intro patterns and then there's additional patterns to layer there's section a main patterns section a patterns to layer so some of these are just huge productions uh the ones over here don't have that much Actually, this 6-4 song has that, and there's some improv stuff, this turnarounds. It's pretty cool. So anyway, here's the first song. This is the ballad. And under effects, I mean, this, this is all the same as before. So I'm just going to put them up and fly through them real quick just so we've heard them and experienced them. This is the basic preset. Make sure I'm at unity gain. Close preset. Focus preset. If you want to know what to watch for while you're listening, is it's the configurations of the effects modules, especially the microphones. We'll see if an effect pops up out of the blue or something. Open room. Soft touch. Definitely has a soft touch, soft vibe. Let's hop over to the soul song, which is at 82. That tremolo is thick. Remember, you can't control the volume of it, so maybe certain presets have a thicker tremolo or non-thicker tremolo, so might be a reason you choose that preset. If you're in love with tremolo, check out the Soul Rhodes EKX. It's fantastic. Tremolo is spammed all over it. I'll put a link to it in the description. I got a super detailed overview on it. 
And of course, the session organ EKX has not only the Leslie speaker, but some tremolos. So check that out as well. Links are below. Here's basic mallets. Close mallets. Focus mallets. Actually, uh, I got one more song up here. It's at 173. It's a high tempo. Oh, this one's in 6.8, so that explains the tempo. And let's go to open rim mallets and check this out. This is, what's the name of this? It's just a blues. Here we go. It's probably a shuffle. All right. It's a shuffle with a straight time signature, I believe. Soft touch mallets. Soft vibe mallets. So many, not that I can pinpoint it, but tones and playing styles that I've heard my whole life, whether it's like 60s and 70s TV shows that I watched, you know, reruns of as a kid or movies, never mind orchestra or wherever you see uh, melodic metal instruments. So, all right, so I have effects down here. Let me show you guys. I'm, I'm on dimensional. Actually, let me mute this channel. I set up this program. Uh, plugin called Riffer. It's a very affordable plugin. I'll link to it in the description. If you dig it, check it out. Now, I only use Riffer so much. I've been using it for years, but only particular instruments do I use Riffer with, and melodic percussion seems like the perfect instrument because Riffer, uh, easy, easy Keys 2 does not have an arpeggiator, never mind a, 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 you know, an inspiration machine, an idea generator, and that's what Riffer is. So I just have Riffer slaving Easy Keys. Riffer is going to tell Easy Keys what to play, and let me just set it up real quick. There's a density effect, which is kind of for EDM, so I'll turn that on. I'll lock it off. I'm in the key of C. Let's give it an extra octave. Yeah, and let's lower the octave. Cool. And now it's going to play 16th notes, randomly generated. Actually, I want to... Uh, here's my C note, and I want to lock this C note. So it, it this whatever sequence it generates, it always starts on C. And let's just do this. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's not blaze at 173, though. It's going to sound like a mess. Let's bring it down to 90, and let's just see what Riffer does. Riffer's really cool for melodic instruments to get random melodies. It's an idea generator and rarely produces final products. Sometimes it does. Um, let's just hear it. Sounds pretty cool right out of the gate. In dimensional, we actually have a chorus effect, which is cool. Yeah. Oh, and let's not hear this same sequence over and over again. It'll drive us crazy. So let's every two measures, let's have a new sequence. And let me just have less notes. I'll put 12 notes instead of 16, and let's sustain notes. Yeah, here we go. Let's try fading in. Oh, interesting. Let's do a super slow tempo with this. Actually, I'll just tempo over here. Resolution down a quarter. Now let's hear it. Some cool special effects stuff, man. I'll even do a slower tempo. Let's go to 75. I don't see where to adjust this effect, so I think it is just what it is, but it's pretty cool with what it is. That's fun. All right, modulated delay. First time I've seen condenser and ribbon mics named, so that's pretty cool. We have a delay volume. Let's hear. Did 
That little weird noise is that just comes for, that happens on all easy Ks. Um, EK axis when you adjust the time, it just trips out for a second. Let me pause it. Very cool. Let's try stone phase. Bump the tempo back up. We have a phaser. And we have an EQ, which is different. Special effects stuff is fun, dude. It's fun. Very staccato. Here, let me, let's buzz some notes into this real quick. It's kind of cute. This would be cuter higher up octaves, I think. It's kind of fun, you know, scoring a little scene of someone tiptoeing. You know, that's another thing that's nostalgic, like old Looney Tune cartoons, you know, would use instruments like this. All right, we're on modulated delay mallets. This time, I don't know if this time syncs with the DAW, but that delay sounds correct right now. So let's just leave it at that. Sounds cute. Stone phase mallets. Definitely hear that phaser popping out. Plus we got the EQ knob. So I hope you guys got something out of this overview, whether it's just to see what tune tracks up to, or whether you're deciding whether you want to purchase it or not. This was a really entertaining product for me. It's the best I can say about it. And this has a brother or sister product, which is the same thing, except it's not metal instruments, it's wood instruments. And I also do a video on that too. The link's in the description. So I hope you dug it. This is Sean from Shooty School. I make the most elite tune track videos on the internet. Uh, check out shootyschool.com for complete courses and hundreds of free tune track themed videos just like this one. Have a good one.